you can be too martial. If everything is about hard and power and combat and militant and let's go, let's fight, let's battle, you know, and then this opposite side of that, you can be two artists. These are the kind of people that may come in and say, we're not sparring today, are we? Hello, welcome to the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast. This is episode number 93. Today it's a short, fun, solo episode, and I want to talk to you a little bit about are you more martial or more artist? So, you know, we got the two words, martial artist. And I want you to kind of think like yin and yang and where there's a good, true balance with the balance of those opposites. Because I know both type people, you know, way too on the martial side or way too on the artist side. And there is a good balance. But then really it is very important, especially as you advance in life and in your martial arts training, to be able to use that artist to uh, create, to innovate, and to become your own self. You know, in martial arts, we are a martial artist, and that is a creative individual. You actually have a name. You know, you're not a martial art. Maybe early on, I may have actually thought I was Kaji Kimbo, but I realized I'm not Kaji Kimbo. I'm James Cox. In other words, you can follow a system to learn a way to have a foundation. This is the way we punch, kick. This is our history. Know your roots, know your lineage, and do what that system is uh, teaching and what it's all about. But at the same time, you are a creative individual. You're a person, and you're going to be somewhat different. Just keep your basics solid there. So, you know, it also makes me think like things like uh, what is martial arts and what is street fighting? Have you ever heard those people like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to fight you with martial arts, but I'll street fight you? Or, uh, yeah, he's a martial artist. He's not a street fighter. Like, almost like that's a bad thing, right? Oh, man, he's not a street fighter. I, I don't quite get all that thinking there. But what is the difference in street fighting and martial arts? Now, street fighting has evolved. Street fighting has evolved where it actually uh, is some sort of a sport. If it's backyard fighting or bare knuckle or, you know, people uh, becoming famous YouTube fighters, street fighters, to then eventually move into actual fighting and training and as a competitive career or sport. But to me, the very beginning of street fighting versus martial arts, right? What are we both doing the same? We're punching, we're kicking, we're hitting, we're getting hit, we're working out, we're moving, attacking, defending. So there's some similarities. What is the biggest difference in martial arts and street fighting? I'll say it in two words, morals and philosophy. That's the biggest difference, you know, So we're doing a lot of the same things, but hopefully the martial artist has a little better ethics, uh, morals, belief. They understand concepts, philosophies, you know, uh, reasons and whys to do this or that uh, uh, of technique that makes a difference. But, you know, they also understand philosophy and, and they have a responsibility of trying not to hurt someone, you know, where a street fighters main goal is to hurt someone. Right. Of course, you know, well, what about an attacker? They're trying to hurt someone. They have a goal, they have a plan, and it's usually pretty evil and nasty and uh, whatever else there. But whereas a martial artist is almost opposite, at least at first, is what can we do to prevent a situation? What can we do to not hurt someone? Anybody can hurt someone. I brought up a story where, you know, I was holding a baby and the baby is moving around and headbutted me. I was like, oh man, that really hurt, right? So there for a second, I almost got knocked out by an eight month old, right? With a, with a deadly headbutt. So uh, a good martial artist, if, if you've seen it or sparred with any of these guys, it's crazy the amount of control and respect to be able to put their foot at your left eyeball and touch it. Just to let you know, they could have hit you, but they really didn't. Um, to be able to roll with you and, and, and have you in 10 different submissions and never finalize one of them because they are good enough uh, and they understand that how to use the control, the respect and technique with deeper philosophy, that it's not always about hurting someone. It's about keeping them from hurting you, or it's about just drilling and training and talk, not taking advantage of someone. Don't be that kind of martial artist that's a bully, that's taking advantage of people in class or outside. You know, why would you do that? That's misusing your powers, right? So to me, martial arts, uh, what is being too martial? Well, too martial means you always want to fight. You've seen those people in the gym. Every day they come in, they have their pads in their hand. Sometimes their pads are not even in their duffel bag. It's not even in a gym bag. Their pads are in their hand. And they're like, are we sparring? Are we sparring? Can we spar today? You know, right? I, I love sparring myself. But you can be too martial. If everything is about hard and power and combat and militant and let's go, let's fight, let's battle, you know? And then this opposite side of that, you can be too artist. These are the kind of people that may come in and say, 
we're not sparring today, are we? Right? They keep their pads zipped up far away. Or they forget them at home. Well, dang it, I left my mouthpiece today, you know, or something like that, right? And these are people that are avoiding the contact. I mean, do I mean to say they're too soft? Well, maybe the training is too soft. They're avoiding the contact. They're avoiding the struggle, the resistance. And you got to have that. You know, I don't necessarily believe in non-contact martial arts. I believe in training for martial arts that can not have contact, but that's cross-training. And then you go back to your martial arts, you know, yoga and meditation and Tai Chi. And, you know, you don't have contact necessarily when you're hitting bags. I mean, you're hitting bags, there's resistance, but you don't have someone fighting you back. Um, sparring is, is a thing that can really make or break people. I've seen many people fall in love with martial arts over sparring and even competing goes in that. And I've seen many people quit and never come back over sparring and or competing. And it could be just because of a bad experience. You know, how was your first sparring session? Did you run into those bullies or did you, that was too martial? Or did you run into someone that had some control philosophy and respect and built your confidence to get ready for the next sparring session? So uh, it's always a risk, man, in sparring. You know, that's why it should be supervised. You should learn from a qualified instructor that can give you the tips and the pointers. And how about we try to learn a little bit how to spar before we spar? Start with some drills, start with bag work, start with mitts, start with, uh, you know, developing the timing and the techniques that you need. And then you can go into specific sparring. Well, let's do a round of body punching only. Let's do a round of jab sparring only. Let's do a round where I'm going slow and you're working on defending and countering. And then the other way around. And then you inch by inch and you get a little bit deeper into it and you build that. You don't have to start 100%. You can start 10%. 10% sparring, you know, a flow roll, light jujitsu rolling. It's a real thing, and it's really good because it's not so hard on your body. You know, what I've seen with some people that are what I'm saying is too martial. Well, too martial becomes too hurt, right? You see these people that are too martial and always hurt, or they will pay the price later. It might take 10 years. And then you see these people 10, 15, 20, 30 years later that can barely get around. You know, they've had surgeries all over and they'll tell you about how hard their training was and how tough they were, but they were too martial. Maybe there's a difference in training hard and training smart. You don't want to train so hard where you're always hurt. You know, there was a saying of, you know, people being tough. Well, we're tough. We're tough. We sparred this hard. We do this or that. We didn't use mats. We didn't use pads. I know I did some of that myself and, uh, the, the lineage I come from, these guys trained hard. And I, I appreciate and respect it, man, on what they went through to where well, we don't have to, the kind of sacrifices they made, right? But you can be so tough that really in the long run, you just took a lot of beatings, you know, and that's not so good on your mind or your body in many ways. Now, at the same time, on the opposite side, I'm going back and forth. If you're too artist, I've seen people like this, and they've never really faced resistance. And then in a real situation, they don't know what to do. You got to learn how to hit someone. You also got to learn how to get hit by someone. It's a hit and get hit world in the fighting, you know. And if you're too artistic, you can get a little bit soft. You're not really ready for struggle. You're not really ready for a combative back and forth situation. If you understand what I mean, it's kind of like people that may drill too much. It's a difference in like a one step, someone steps and throw a punch and you beat them up versus someone just randomly going wild at you with with you know six punch type combinations so i'll just you know challenge you to balance out your martial and your art now what's beauty about what's beautiful about the artistic side man and my instructors are amazing at this is that when you get to a level so let's recommend that you start off with a solid foundation you build your martial arts you build it upon your basics nothing is better than solid basics that strong foundation then you can build a structure then you will flourish with your advanced techniques how about learning a sidekick before you learn a spinning sidekick? How about learning a right cross before you learn a Superman punch? But then you can get to an advanced level where you can create, you can innovate, and you become more of yourself, not of your instructor or your style. That is advanced, and that's a beautiful thing that I recommend we all work on doing as you advance yourself. Black belt level, let's just kind of go with that. You'll see black belts that will create kata, that will create self-defense drills. Some will create entire systems aside of their own system or martial arts style. And um, it's now their expression of that art, but maybe in a more advanced way or a way that works more for them. Remember, what works for someone else might not work for you. 
you know. Now we got to start off with the basics. We have to be spoon fed. Someone tries to choke you, put your chin down, put your hand up, pluck, wrap around, get the arms off from you. But then you may advance that technique and you find another way. Also see being more artistic with knowing your weeks or weaknesses and strengths. You know, what if, what if, what if kicking is just not your strength? So you can put a little bit more emphasis on your hands. Uh, you know, grappling might not be your strength or the other way around and you can put a little more strength. What if you're right-handed versus left-handed? Your instructor was right-handed. He showed you all of these ways right-handed, but you're left-handed. So now you can create and innovate, be an artist and work some other things in there. So as an artist, there's some good ways in expressing yourself. I always tell my students it's like being a singer, a painter, a dancer when you're a fighter because you know how to visualize, imagine, pretend. You can put yourself in that situation and you can get a lot more out of it because you're kind of connecting, you know, your mind, your body, your spirit. And it's a good uh, stress release. It's a good uh, way to see where you are uh, when you're making all that stuff happen. That's kind of what I really want to talk to you guys about is uh, think about it yourself. Are you, are you too martial? So maybe you need to slow down on all the hard physical combat fighting and, uh, Cross train with some yoga, some Tai Chi, some meditation, you know, do some other light work, uh, work on your control. How hard and fast and strong can you kick and barely, barely touch something versus, you know, going through it. And then the other way around, if you're not getting the physical part of it, then you need to, you got to get in there and have some, just like lifting, you got to have some heavy days Well, you got to get in there and you got to have some hard days. You got to get some bumps and bruises and scratches and, you know, go through those struggles because you got to learn how to hit and get hit. Like I said, uh, and then when you advance it all, be creative and find more of what your strengths are. That's being self-aware and knowing what you may enjoy more. I'm a, I'm, I'm an extension of my instructors, but I've become myself where then I've innovated and created things of my own, but a lot of it's based off their ways, but you know, I learned a little bit more about myself. So let's do it guys. Let's be a complete martial artist and not a partial artist. That's a good one. All right, be sure to check out all of our other podcasts and the YouTube channel, James Cox Martial Arts. Thanks.